We're gonna start by making an angel food cake for our luscious lemon angel roll. It's simple. You start with a box to mix. Any beginner can do this. So before you begin, you're gonna take some parchment paper and line your stoneware bar pan because if you bake it in there um, without that, it's going to stick and we need to be able to pull it entirely out of the package. So add it to a bowl. You don't even need to pull a mixer out for this. You can mix it up by hand. What I love about angel food cake is that it's pretty easy. You add water, that's it. Okay, so let's give it a stir. I'm using the batter bowl. This is a great tool that you'll probably use for all sorts of things, mixing up not just your batters, but pancakes, uh, waffles. You can use it for storing your um, potato salad. All right, so mix it for about 30 seconds or so until everything's combined. And look on the outside of the bowl. If you see any dry spots, make sure you catch those too. Okay, looking good. So angel food cake is largely egg white. So you'll see it's kind of foamy when you add the liquid to it. And that's exactly what you want. All right, we're just gonna pour it into the bar pan. So a uh, bar pan is a typical large sheet pan size. It's lined with the parchment. Go ahead and pour. Scrape it all out. And that is it. So just make sure that it's spread out. You might need to push it into the corners so it's all even. When you're baking with your stoneware, always bake on the bottom rack for your best results. I'm gonna pop it in for about 30 minutes until it's set and then we're gonna let it cool and put it together. The cake is all done. It took 30 minutes and you'll know it's done when it's kind of springy. So as soon as it comes out, you're gonna add a half a cup of powdered sugar. I've got it here in the flour sugar shaker and I'm just gonna put it all over the top. You want it to be generously sprinkled. It gives you kind of a cloud, but here we go. <laughs> Okay, every part needs to be covered. And then we need to show the cake how to stay curled for when we assemble it later. There we go. Now take a piece of parchment paper and you're gonna lay it right over the top of the cake. I'm gonna take a second cooling rack and if you only have one, that's okay. Let's see, get this one rolling out, turn it the other way, there we go. Take your cooling rack and you're going to invert it. It's time to flip it. So reach for the bottom firmly and then flip towards yourself. Now the stone is heavy, so if you don't trust yourself, maybe take it out first. Use two cooling racks without it. And we lift the bar pan off. And now it's time to show this cake how to stay rolled up. So I like to turn it away from me. Now after it's all um, flipped over, you're going to roll the cake right in the parchment paper. So just take your hands, the cake is kind of hot, so just want to roll it and then we're going to let it cool in the roll, right in the paper, just like that. Okay. So if it starts to roll back, just wedge something in there, a knife or something, and we're gonna let this sit. Once it's completely cool, then we add the filling. A couple of hours ago, I baked this angel food cake in a roll in the stoneware bar pan. It's been cooling now for two hours and it is time to put this stunning dessert together. If you love strawberry shortcake, you're gonna love this. If you like angel food cake, you're going to love this. And if you like making impressive things, but you don't always feel like the most talented baker, you can totally pull this off. So here's what we're gonna do to get started. We're gonna start with some strawberry ice cream topping. There's some definite, um, we're using Cool Whip and the strawberry ice cream topping and uh, some fresh things too, but you're gonna get a few uh, little helps from these things. So let's go ahead and open it up. I'm gonna add some of this to a bag because I told you we're gonna make this a stunning dessert. So it's gonna be fancy. We're gonna do some plate art. 
Um, the strawberry ice cream topping is pretty soft. So I'm dumping a, some of it into a Ziploc bag that we'll be able to use for garnish for some plate art in a little bit. We'll save the rest to line on our angel food cake. And then here in the batter bowl, I have eight ounces of cream cheese. You can use the um, Neufchatel if that's what you like. You wanna soften it. So I've already softened it for 30 seconds in the microwave. You wanna make sure that when you stir it, it does feel soft. It doesn't feel hard in any sort of way. Um, we've got a quarter cup of powdered sugar. And I'm just gonna mix that in a little bit. It's gonna sweeten it up. And then we'll add some lemon zest and juice. So to get the zest from your lemon, you can use a microplane. I'm gonna use my microplane adjustable grater. Let me give you a quick hint on this. So they stack and store flat. To release the handle, just hold the handle, put your thumb on the edge and watch. Do you see how I'm squeezing and it's sliding over? So when it slides over, you can pop it open, however you like, okay? So I did ginger on here yesterday, the day before. We'll do some zest now. Um, when a recipe calls for zest, use it. Hey, guess what? Gracie's saying hello. <laughs> she doesn't like lemons. She just thinks that it might be good, but um, zest is packed with flavor. It's the colored part of your citrus fruit. So you don't want to grate past where it starts to become white because that's real bitter. So we're just going to add some of the zest. And I like microplanes for this because it's going to be really fine. So, um, just so you can see, I'll just show you a pinch. See how fine that is? It means it's going to blend into your recipe really nicely and nobody's gonna bite into a chunk of lemon. Okay, so let's go ahead and slice this up. We are gonna save some of the lemon for garnish and we need juice from some of it as well. So we need a tablespoon of juice. I'm gonna use the citrus press uh, for those of you that are joining me for the first time, I'm Julie Gizzy. I've been at this for almost 25 years. I used to make this recipe at in-home parties eons ago, and I kind of stumbled upon it the other day. Um, you know, I've been doing a lot of going down memory lanes, thinking about my favorite chef career. And so going back to some of these older recipes has just been really fun. In fact, if some of you were at those early parties with me, you might have had this prepared by me at one of your parties at your houses. And those of you that are just joining me, you're gonna love making this yourself. So I've got a tablespoon of juice here. So add your zest, your sugar, and your juice to your cream cheese mixture. And to get it super smooth, I'm gonna use a whisk. Just kinda make sure it's all blended. We're gonna add some Cool Whip to it, but you wanna make sure the mixture is perfectly smooth before you get to that step, because you want that, um, you know, it's, you don't want it clumpy. You want it nice and smooth. So get that juice all in there. It smells lemony. Now at this point, you could add a little bit of yellow food coloring. Um, I'm not doing that because I'm not a fan of adding dyes to food. But if you want it to be a bright yellow, feel free. Go ahead and do that if you like. Um, but I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I like things to be as natural as possible as I get a scoop of Cool Whip, which is not natural, but you know, we do what we can do. Okay, so we need a cup of Cool Whip. I tell people you never need to measure Cool Whip, sour cream, or powdered sugar. Eyeball those things. For the most part, you can't go wrong, right? So you wanna fold that Cool Whip in, and here's what folding means. You just kinda of stir from the outside and go in. There we go. So it's all blended up. That's gonna be our filling. And let's get the rest ready. I think we're ready to roll this up. So um, turn some things around. So let's get the roll. This dessert is so impressive. If you have any special family occasions coming up, you're gonna to wanna to make this. Everybody will think that it's just gorgeous. So if there's a wedding shower or a baby shower or a family gathering, you'll love it. Okay, so when you bake this, it remembers to stay curled when you roll it up when it's warm. So now when I unroll it, I'm gonna do that kind of gently. It won't go completely flat, but it'll be flat enough so that you can work with it. So I've got parchment paper on the bottom side and in the center. And now that it's cool, the parchment will peel off 
pretty well. Never ever use wax paper for this. It's not gonna work very well. So let's just pull this off. And I know it looks kind of funky right now, but it will totally come together. Okay, we'll just set this to the side. All right, so this ice cream topping, you need about a quarter cup. I don't measure it. I just kind of make sure there's a slight um, film all the way to the edges and just spread it. So I think you're gonna end up needing a little more than a quarter of a cup. But um, this recipe kind of feels like art to me because it's truly beautiful. Um, spread it right to the edges. Because if you have a guest, a family member that gets that end piece, you want them to have all that yummy goodness, right? So make sure everybody gets it. And when we slice this, it provides some gorgeous color. So let's get a little bit more. Um, this topping is really sweet. So you don't want to go too, too thick. You just want a little bit. It smells so yummy. Okay, now we're ready for the creamy filling. So just dump it all on here. There we go. And I'll just use this guy here. I love our scrapers, do you guys? So um, if you're, it's kind of hard to see, these are rounded. So this is the mix and scraper and this is the mini mix and scraper. The one that's halfway in between is in my dishwasher. Um, these are safe up to 650 degrees. They don't melt, they last forever. So you wanna spread out and then kind of press into your cake because you don't want, you wanna avoid as much as you can getting that strawberry mixture mixed into your cream cheese mixture so that you will have that beautiful color. And I don't know if I'm doing a perfect job here, but you guys would still eat a piece, right? Okay, so here we go. Pretty simple so far. Now you can do other flavors too. There's like chocolate ones. You can do black forest. I'll post some other recipe variations if strawberry is not your thing. Okay, so let's see, we've got it all done. Let's go ahead and roll it up. So I think it's easier to roll away from you. So whatever end was the center before, you're gonna use the help of this. So if you join me when I made a ham and cheese omelet roll a few weeks ago, it's the same idea. So you use this to help you when you lift gently and take one hand um, to press it forward, it just combines the whole thing. There we go. All right. Now, you wanna make it pretty. So when you've got your roll, you can kinda of press it slightly so that it all comes together. I like to add a touch more powdered sugar now, so I'm using our flour sugar shaker to do that, just to fill in any cracks and it looks like, I don't know, it's just pretty. It's like fairy dust, right? All right, now we're ready to make it pretty. So if presentation is big for you and you really like to make things look nice, I'll suggest that you cut off the end and that's your treat. You get to eat that first. So it'll make that first slice beautiful, okay? So can you see this end here? I'll lift this up, kind of bring you close. Do you see the colors? So that's gonna be our slice. So I'm gonna give, I like to slice them about an inch thick. And when you're slicing, use a bread knife and saw. Don't press down, because you don't want to um, mash it at all. All right, let's do some plate art. So I've got my plate. I love using white for this because the colors really pop. And we're gonna take our scissors and snip the corner of the Ziploc bag that has that little bit of strawberry topping. So you're just gonna kind of grab it at the top, pinch the end here, and just snip a very, very tiny piece, not over your cake, because you don't want somebody to accidentally eat that piece, right? So I like to just take this and just kind of zigzag it. Oh, there's a piece of strawberry stuck in there. I guess if that happens, you just kind of squeeze it up and 
this strawberry ice cream topping actually has real strawberries in it. Who knew? <laughs> okay, that's stuck. You get the idea, right? You could probably make your own puree if you wanted to. All right, that'll work. Let me rinse off my fingers real quick. Everything's sticky. Okay, so now we're just gonna put the uh, angel roll on the plate and we're gonna make a strawberry fan using an egg slicer. So when you do this, leave the greens on, take your strawberry, point it up and take your egg slicer and come on almost all the way down, lift it up and then you've got this beautiful little fan. So you can just set that on the side and then I've got some Cool Whip in my Easy Accent Decorator. Use the open tip. This is the same one I use when I make deviled eggs. And then bring the tip close to your plate and just kind of give a swirl just like that. Now, if you want to, you can take a piece of your lemon from before. Got a little bit of space here. We're gonna go ahead and give a slice. And here's something kind of fun. Um, those of you who know how to garnish know these tricks, but if you're new, take that tip of your knife and bring it to the halfway point, slice down. I see I have a few little seeds here, so I'm just gonna knock those out first so that doesn't get mixed up in our dessert. And when you've got it sliced to the halfway point, you can make a little twist with your lemon. So there you go. Fancy dessert, pretty easy to put together and elegant enough for a beautiful gathering like a wedding shower or a baby shower. If you know somebody that's getting married, I offer wedding registries and virtual wedding showers. So hit me up, I can tell you a little bit more. In the meantime, I hope you'll try this. I'll post the recipe in just a bit and I hope you'll give it a try. Thanks for joining me.